Hello, welcome to another edition of Crop Life Retail Week. I'm Eric Sfilagoy, editor of Crop Life and Crop Life Iron, here with a remote Laura Sawinski. And I'm sure the <laughs> folks who know Laura is, lives in El Paso, Texas, and I guess the uh, hat would be the dead giveaway if they didn't know that. But Laura, good <laughs> to see you again. How you doing? Yeah, I just caught myself in the little camera thing. It looks like the hat's taken up the whole thing, but... And, and I was thinking that you might think that, oh, you know, she's putting on this hat. And, you know, the truth is I actually look like this more days than not. So. All right. Well, uh, high, high heat. Yeah, I was going to say I was I was thinking maybe the hat was to protect you when you were out walking your dog. And let's see, El Paso was probably what, 93 this morning, about 6 a.m. And it's going up to like 110 maybe. Or are you guys not in the in the heat dome that everybody's talking about. We are. It's probably going to be about 108 today, thereabouts. So wow. get out and um, get the dog walked early <laughs> and then take cover. <laughs> okay. Well, all I can say is I hope your heating and cooling is in good working order because it sounds like Indeed. that would be a, a definite necessity with what's going on. And our hearts go out to everyone who's dealing with the heat. Uh, yes. Sure, it cannot be fun, particularly those folks who try to get some crop in the ground and are uh -huh. now unfortunately watching it uh, get a little overcooked perhaps uh, in the field. So, Yeah, it's, it's a scorcher this week. Yep. So, hey, anyhow, um, I guess under my heading for my part of the video this week, I'm going to be talking about trips and new products. Cool. So, yes, I've actually had a couple of trips in the last few weeks that have involved visits and uh, new products have come up. The first one I'll talk about took place during this this week, actually. I was in Indianapolis, uh, Indiana, visiting with our friends at Corteva AgriScience. And my, uh, my thanks to everyone there. We had a wonderful time, myself and our sales rep, Addie Schaefer. And we talked to several people. But the one thing we did find out about is uh, a little while back, Corteva introduced a new product, Resicor REV, Rev, as they're calling it. Mm -hmm. And now here is Nick Burke from Corteva. I'm going to have a video clip of him talking about why Resicor Rev is going to be a good Thing for growers to consider using in the future. Here uh, this past week we just announced Resicor Rev as a new formulation that we're going to have into the marketplace and why we're excited to bring this product into the marketplace today is it's going to bring four really uh, features and benefits that we see as value uh, for those growers and retailers out there today. That first one being weed, uh, a superior weed control program. So when we talk about superior weed control we're looking at having three active ingredients that includes the chlorpyrrolid, your mesodrion, and your encapsulated acetochlor. The other piece of why we call this a really good superior weed control is it's going to provide eight weeks of residual activity. So with those benefits that we have there today, we find that as a really proven product, a proven a mix that we've got into the marketplace that has uh, proven itself and kind of what we consider the gold standard uh, as uh, we control out there uh, within the marketplace. So that's what Nick Burke had to say about the weed control aspects of Resicor Rev. Uh, as he said, 75 broadleaf weeds and grasses that can be controlled using this mm -hmm. in fields. And he mentioned the encapsulation of acetochor, uh, which uh, is one of the three active ingredients in the product. And then in the second clip, he, uh, you know, again, Laura, as we're moving forward, uh, tank mix products, uh, very, very important for the ag community these days. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nick was talking in this next clip about how Resicor uh, Rev works or plays well with other chemistries in the tank. Another benefit that we're, we see with Resicor Rev is that improved or tank mix compatibility. So when we talk tank mix compatibility, we're looking at improvements here with such as micronutrients and some of those that you more commonly would see today than what growers and retailers are excited about is UAN as well as ATS or also known as ammonium thiosulfate. The other piece that you're going to see too with just tank mix availability is that you still have a lot of those commonly used uh, corn herbicides out there like such as glyphosate and atrazine uh, that can be mixed in there as well. Another featured benefit that we will have is that flexibility. So what do we mean by flexibility? Is that it means that we can, it fits a wide variety of uh, 
programs out there for growers and farmers, uh, such as a pre-mix, a pre, or even a posting virgin up to 24 inch tall corn. The other piece that also comes in with when we talk about flexibility is that it's not only for traded corn, it's for conventional corn as well, and also towards those reduced or no-till acres. The last piece that we wanted to hit on today was the encapsulated acetochlor. And what the encapsulated acetochlor brings with uh, Resicor Rev is that boosted crop safety. And why does this matter for farmers? Well, what we look, see with the boosted crop safety is that it provides those, that crop to continue to grow through the growing season and doesn't have, le it doesn't have as much le uh, crop response as what you would see with a product that may, ha that may not have an encapsulation. So with that, it gives those growers the potential to produce a uh, you, uh, optimize their maximum yield potential. So that's what our friend Nick Burke had to say about Resicor Rev. Uh, the plans are right now for Corteva, uh, they have Resicor XL, which they're going to be phasing out uh, to replace it with Rev. And for the growers and ag retailers looking to get Rev into their warehouses and on their fields, uh, it'll be available for the 2025 growing season. So come this fall, um, look for that product to be available to our market. Awesome. Yeah. So, and I actually, I hinted about this. I know I did take a trip a couple of weeks ago, but actually I was sworn to secrecy. I could not <laughs> talk about the trip or what I found out, but uh, until June 10th, but we are now past June 10th as we were recording this video. So I'm happy to report that my trip took place and uh, went down to Raleigh, North Carolina, mm -hmm. visited with our friends at BASF, and they had some very big news to share. They are introducing to the marketplace a new soybean cyst nematode control measure. This is called Nemosphere. And the mm -hmm. company claims it's the first and only uh, biotechnology trait for soybean cyst nematode control, which they say is the number one yield robbing pest in soybean fields in the United States. Mm -hmm. And I know Laura, one of, you know, some of the statistics they threw out, um, growers on average lose about $1.5 billion a year in yield uh, yeah. because of soybean cyst nematode. It affects about 200,000 farmers across the country. Mm -hmm. And I know that one of the researchers said they were doing some soil tests of around various fields in the uh, in the Midwest, and they found that uh, soybean cyst nematode was present about 90% of the time in the soil. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's the good news that we've got this new trait. Uh, it works basically in the plant. It's a cry protein that they've added to the uh, soybean plants. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be stacking it with uh, Corteva's in list E3 uh, as they bring it to market. But the cry protein works, of course, it, uh, it d disrupts the gut of the insect uh, mm -hmm. that's, you know, chewing on the plant. Mm -hmm. Basically keeps the insect from digesting or metabolizing any of the nutrients. So eventually the pest dies from starvation. Mm -hmm. um, that's the good news. The bad news is, is, of course, this is a biotechnology trait uh in a plant so mm -hmm. unfortunately basf is expecting pretty long approval process before it comes to market they're anticipating mm -hmm. it won't get approval until 2028 mm -hmm. four years from now yeah. but for growers soybean growers in 2029's growing season they should have the nemosphere trait to use in their mm -hmm. fields so, yeah yeah hope on the horizon as it were hope on the horizon so, hey, I guess speaking of hope on the horizon, you have a couple of tidbits to share as well. So if you could, take it away. I did. Um, last week you were talking about the planting report, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, so, well yeah. What, where, we, where we were in terms of percentage planted, correct? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so this week, uh, USDA uh, released its first assessment of the season um, and the... Uh, summary is that corn, U.S. corn and soybean crops um, are in good or excellent health, according to this assessment. Um, this was in line with trade expectations and is above the 10-year average um, uh, for soy, which um, they pegged at 72% of U.S. soybeans being in good health. So this is above the 10-year average um, for initial soy ratings, um, which is at 68%. 
Um, so soy um, ratings came in a week after um, initial U.S. corn conditions, which landed at 75 percent, rated as good to excellent, well above the trade estimate of 70 percent and the 10-year average of 71 percent. So um, good news on both fronts for corn and soybean um, and better than uh, the prior or excuse me, um, only two years um, were better than this initial assessment. And those years were in 2014 and 2018. So, um, you know, fingers crossed, um, USDA's condition scores um, suggest both crops are poised for success, barring any extreme weather events, including prolonged heat, dryness, or a prominent derecho that was seen in 2020. So, yeah, ho hoping for the best, but certainly good news from the USDA uh, regarding soybean and corn. Um, a little update on the uh, longshoremen negotiations. I mentioned that I think a week or two ago. Um, this is the ILA, the International Longshoremen's Association, which um, covers um, unionized workers on East Coast and Gulf Coast ports. And um, that contract is uh, set to expire on September 30th. And while initial reports looked like things were going to hopefully go smoothly with regards to negotiations, um, there was um, a, a little stumble this week, if you will. Um, similar to the longshoremen on the West Coast, um, automation at ports is a real contentious um, topic between um, waterfront employers and longshoremen. Um, and likewise, uh, there was um, an automated tool for clearing trucks at the port of Mobile, Alabama, that um, started the um, kerfluffle. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> try, trying to be polite here. <laughs> So, uh, you know, not, not good news. Hopefully things can um, get smoothed out um, so that we avoid any type of work slowdown or strike. Um, so that's the update. We'll keep you posted on that. Um, well, Laura, before you go on, is, 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 is at this point, or is the union threatening strike or slowdowns? Or is that well, just because of what we've seen in the past, you're guesstimating that might happen? Um, yeah, they haven't um, gone so far as to threaten that yet, but they did um, kind of shut down the launch of, of more formal negotiations. So, uh, you know, over over the years and having been on the um, import-export side of the business, this kind of is not unusual in that, you know, both sides kind of set up for, you know, they put their <laughs> their talking points or um, you know, things in, in place. And, you know, that's, that's what, um, the negotiations, that's why, frankly, uh, in, 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 and increasingly they start so many months in advance because there's so many things to kind of smooth through, but historically, at least in recent years, um, longshoremen, both West coast, as well as East and Gulf coast, the, um, advent of more automation at the ports, um, not surprisingly, is is something that is a a big big issue between the two. So we'll see what we'll see what happens. Um, I'll keep you posted there. Uh, good news though, this week the um, commercial shipping through the port of Baltimore is back in full swing. Um, mm -hmm. The channel has been cleared. Uh, officials expect um, the volume will be back to normal. Uh, by mid-July, um, and as we've reported before, Port of Baltimore, um, very important port, uh, key gateway for farm equipment, and as well as um, autos. So really happy that that port is back online, fully operational, at least the channel um, for shipping. So end on a good note. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, my kudos on doing that. Uh, yeah. Reversing those stories would have not been as much, right. it wouldn't have been as much fun. So, well, good. <laughs> good news for the Port of Baltimore. Was Absolutely. And then if I may, Eric, let me just um, say uh, again, we're super, super, 
speaking of, you know, kind of ending on a, a good note, we are, um, as of Saturday, the 15th, we will be 43 days out from Tech Hub Live. Wow. And um, uh, this year, um, like prior years, we have our Crop Life Awards of Excellence, which are part of the Global Ag Tech Initiative here at Meister Media. And um, we um, have a blast. I know you and me being on the on the stage, handing these awards out, hearing from the recipients. Um, we have notified the winners in each of the four categories. Awards of Excellence covers the Ag Tech Educator Researcher of the Year, the Legacy in Ag Tech Award, Precision Crop Advisor and Entrepreneur, and lastly, the Precision Farmer of the Year. So those four cate- categories, the winners have been notified. We'll keep it under our hat, of course, um, for the and time. you have being. the hat for it, definitely. And I have the hat for it, all four fit in. <laughs> and um, uh, it's great because I, I believe that all four will be able to uh, be in person to receive the award. So I'm super looking, uh, look, look, looking forward to that. Um, just want to men- mention again, I, um, you know, in addition to the fireside chats that you and I have, where we're sitting down in front of our um, hokey but um, lovable fire and chatting with people, little little snippets in the foyer. Um, we likewise have our tech talks roundtables, and this year we've added a workshop on the end of um, day two of the program that will be on Wednesday, July thirty first one on drones and one on bi- biologicals as they pertain to row crops. So um, super, super excited. And I I was hesitating, like, should I say this or not? I'm just going to go for it. I, I'm not going to disclose who, but there's a good chance uh, we found out this week that someone that we've been going after for the better part of a year um, may be able to join the program on, on day one and Kind of lend a little cachet to the tech tech hub live so we're we're super excited so techhublive.com check it out eric and i will both be there having a blast along with our, our colleagues and all the attendees and exhibitors yeah we'll just have to see if you bring the hat so <laughs> <laughs> i think i'm going to okay. <laughs> why all not right. well we'll go with your woman in ag tech hat i'm sure so that too <laughs> all right. one in each hand <laughs> Very good. All right. Well, Laura, hey, let's let's end this then on a positive note. Fingers crossed that you'll get this correct. Time for fun with numbers. Yay! All right, Tyler, right. get the balloons ready. I think I got it right last week, wasn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I believe there were balloons last week. Yes, so, yes. I don't know if we'll be doing the special effects this week or not, since you're not <laughs> in studio with me, but we will see. So, hey, this week, Miss Laura, your number is 108. 108. Okay. All right. Just a number, not a percentage, not a dollar amount. 108. Okay. So, Laura, is 108, is that A, the Ag Economy Barometer figure for May? Is it B, the recent re- record-setting soybean yield per bushel mark set in 2023? Is it C, the number of amendments being considered for the new farm bill? Or is it D, the quote-unquote low temperature experienced <laughs> by our coworker Eric Davis on his recent whip trip to <laughs> Phoenix? Oh, this is a hard one. I... Sorry. Uh, C, farm, farm bill. Nope. A? <laughs> it's A, yes. Yeah. This, this goes back to your favorite thing. I thought I you know. would get this because um, this is that this is that Purdue University CME group, <laughs> uh, you know, the survey they do of farmers every month to get their feelings about the marketplace. Yeah. And the ag economy barometer in May was 108. It was a nine point increase from April yep. and even better. The index for future expectations climbed 11 points to 117. Yeah. So That's good. Uh, again, they basically said that the survey was finding that growers were feeling a little more confident now that stuff was in the ground. 
yep. and the commodity prices have started to go up a little bit so that there's there's the feeling that things moving forward to 24 might be a little less bleak than they looked back when it was raining like gangbusters and everyone yep. was having trouble getting stuff into the ground. So, uh, well, I'm I'm glad, and I should have gotten it. You're right. I should have known that one, but I'm thinking. Well, now that I think about it, Farm Bill, maybe it's 208 things. <laughs> hey, I was going to say, I'm sure there's a lot of amendments. I didn't count them, but I thought that's been in the news as well. So, yep. Oh well. No balloons this week. Sorry. Right. Better luck next time. <laughs> well, thanks everyone for joining us for this edition of Crop Life Retail Week. On behalf of myself, Eric Suligoy, Laura Sowinski, and everyone at the Crop Life Media Group, thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next week. If you have questions or comments about today's episode of Retail Week, contact us by email or Twitter or type your message in the comment section below. Your feedback is important to us. We will try our best to address your thoughts in next week's episode and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.